Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do something a little bit different this time. We're going to learn how to prove triangles congruent. Now, we've already talked about proving triangles congruent. You have to prove every side is, of one triangle is congruent to every side of the other triangle, and every angle of one triangle is congruent to every other triangle. Now, the problem is I want to start with two triangles. I currently have one, or do I? What I have is I have three sets of sides. Those sides are all absolutely congruent. I also have three sets of angles. And those angles are all congruent. What I wanted you to see very clearly is that the orange angle matches the orange angle, the green matches the green, the red matches the red, and the red matches the red. And each of these sides are indeed congruent to one another. So there is no, no cheating. But what we have to do now is we have to create triangles of any type that I wish. And by creating triangles, find easier ways to prove things congruent rather than just by proving all six pieces of each piece. So what we're looking for is we're looking for what is the minimum number of angles that I could have to prove triangles congruent. What is the minimum number of sides I can have to prove triangles congruent? That's what I'm looking for here. I am looking for minimums because I don't want to keep proving six different items every time I prove a triangle. I would like to prove maybe five each or maybe four each or maybe even three each. Let's find out. Now, first things first, if I have three sides, now, of course, we must use three different sides. We could use three of the same. But just to show you that I'm not cheating, I'm going to use three different size sides. We have a scaling triangle. I'm going to put this triangle together this way, and the whole key here is they can just touch. So there's a triangle right there. I have no idea what the angles measure. I have no idea what the sides are. I haven't measured them. I suppose I could, but I haven't. Now I want to start. Which side? Which, which piece do you want to start with? Doesn't matter. Let's pick this one. If I put this one here on the paper just like this, I need to connect another piece to it. That piece is going to be this one. And so I'm going to connect it. And then finally, because I have a third piece, I need to be able, I need to be able to connect them up as an actual triangle. So by moving this into position just so they touch, Here's what I end up with. I end up with two triangles that are exactly the same size. Well, first of all, you already know this is the same length as this because they started that way and they certainly haven't grown since then. Same and same. So by there, we have three triangles the same. You say, but I'm not sure that that is the same size as that. Well, I can put the angles in it. And if I do, you will find that indeed those angles are congruent. And, well, let's see here, that certainly doesn't fit there, but if it fits here, uh, it doesn't fit here, but it does fit right here. And so now automatically I have two pairs of congruent angles. By the third angle theorem, I am guaranteed to have a third set of angles congruent. So by just having three sides congruent, this side to this side, this side to this side, this side to this side, by having just those three congruent, automatically I have actually six pieces that are congruent because the way these triangles form up automatically form the same angles. Now you say, well, I don't believe you. Start with a different piece. Fine. Let's start over here and uh, let's connect the short one next. And then the long one. But again, to create an actual triangle, I have to swing it in till they touch. And so I now have that angle, that angle, and that angle. So the thing is, regardless of how I measure my three sides or how I attempt to arrange them, as long as I'm using three congruent sets, I'm automatically going to have congruent triangles because the three sides being all the same is going to force all of the angles to be exactly the same. So the first thing I can come up with is proving triangles by side, 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 or SSS, 
Okay, so I have one way to prove triangles that doesn't include all six pieces. It only includes three, side, side, side. Now, on the other hand, let's move away from that. What if I have a side with two angles? Now, if I start with a side and two angles, that means I have an angle, a side in the middle, or included means in the middle, and a side. So let's grab the same pieces over here. There's one, and let's keep actually here so you can continue to see it. There's one. Here's one. How about I turn it around the right way? And here's one. Okay, so thus far I have a side, a set of orange angles, and a set of red angles. Well, that means I need some sides on the pieces. So here we go. Let's put a short one over here by the red. So I'll put a short one over here by the red. Now, you say fine. That builds it. And if I connect this third piece, well, I can easily make a triangle. Now, my, my first problem becomes this doesn't make a triangle. So let's switch. Here we go. And here we go. And that ought to fix our little issue. There we go. Now. So I need a medium on the red. There you go. And now, this should make a perfectly good triangle. But the thing about it is, how do you know that it's the angle that determines it? Well, if I had this side, but I move it out, even if I were able to extend this side out, just like this to make the triangle, I have this angle is congruent to this angle, this side is congruent to this side, but if I try forcing this angle to be this angle, as soon as I make this angle actually match, it should just touch the side below. So if I have this angle, this angle, and the side in the middle, that's enough to lock that triangle in to a congruence set by locking those two angles in the, in, in the included side. So that would be enough. So in this case, all I was giving, you'll notice I did not use those, and the sides only verified that the angles worked. So we had angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. Now, the thing about it is you say, wait a minute. Angle, side, angle. If I have two sets of angles, automatically I have that third angle. So if I remove those pieces, this would be having a side, an angle, and an angle. Well, if I connect those two angles, and if I connect the final two sides together, this would be a side, angle, angle side, angle, angle. Now, again, the same thing is going to happen if I connect these up. I end up with side, angle, angle, and automatically the third angle must be congruent. In fact, we're going to go ahead and prove that at some point, that not only can I use angle, side, angle, but I could use angle, angle, side. that that would be enough to prove triangles congruent, angle, angle, side. So the key is I was only given this much. If I have if I have only that much information, an angle, an angle, and a side, an angle, an angle, and a side, you'll notice the side is not between the two angles at this point. But because we have this angle defined, I can't have a side that's hanging out here somewhere. It has to be brought in and form the triangle, and that should make it congruent. So I have side, 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 angle, side, angle, 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 side. Now, that brings me to another opportunity. What if, on the other hand, I just have two sides? I can have just two sides available to me. So here's just two sides. Now, obviously, if I made a triangle out of this, that's going to be fine, but it's not going to be the same shape as this triangle over here. So I can have two sides. In fact, I can make one obtuse and one acute. 
The problem is those two triangles are not even going to be close to congruent when I make that third side on them. However, if I take any angle, take your pick, any, meeny, miny, mo, doesn't matter. All right, let's go orange. If I take the orange angle and I take this side and I swing it around to where it's locked in with that orange angle and I come over here and put an orange angle in over here and I open it up so that it's locked in on that orange angle, as soon as I do that, I automatically make a side that is, that looks to be about five and a half long for the third side. This would be about five and a half long for the third side as well. So by taking any two sides and an angle between them, I could draw a third side on here, and that third side would be the same length. Well, again, it doesn't work for this one, okay, because then my side can't grow. But if I were allowing my side to be longer, to be five and a half, I could make two perfectly congruent triangles. The nice thing about it is those congruent triangles would also have congruent angles. So the idea is if I have two sides with an angle in the middle, two sides, but I lock them in with an angle in the middle, then automatically I should have my third side the same, which automatically creates the other pieces of the triangle just as we had them. And there we go, and it works out well. So again, I have side, angle, side. So that's side, angle, side. So I have side, angle, side, si angle, side, angle, 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 side, side, angle, side, where the angle is the one that's included. The angle is the one that's in the middle between two congruent sets of sides. So we have angle in the middle. So we only have a couple bit, couple left. Now, the one you cannot, cannot, cannot use is side, side, angle. Side, side, angle does not work. And I'll show you why. Because if I take, if I take a side, well, let's take and let's make a third side that we can change its length. So there's my side. And in this case, I have a side and a side. There we go, side and a side. And we have an angle. Now let's see if I have a nice angle that fits that. That does not work. Let's make an angle that fits it. Okay, so... That's the angle, it can't change. Here's a side length, that can't change. And here's a side length, and that can't change. So I can't have angle side side, angle side side. By the way, you're never allowed to abbreviate it angle side side. It is always side side angle for obvious reasons. Not only can you not use it mathematically, it would be not appropriate. So we have this idea of angle side side. The problem is, this little side right over here kind of is a free flower. If I don't have any angle at the top to lock it in, I can actually keep this angle exactly the same, this side exactly the same, and come up with two different triangles. I could have this triangle. Or I could have Swing this around, you'll look, you know, the third side goes below. But over here, it's going to come back up and it's going to touch again. And so now I have this triangle. And so in this case, the angle didn't change, the side didn't change. But because I don't have this angle locked in at the top, I can move this side, either kick it out like this, and it makes a nice, big, acute triangle, 
or I swing it in like this and it makes a little isosceles triangle. Obviously, the red triangle and the green triangle are not the same, even though they share the same angle, the same side length, and the same side length with no angle to lock it in. It's called um, it's called an indeterminate form or a um, no, we'll just call it a non uh, non standard form for now. So, because I forgot the other word for it, we'll come across it. So in this case, side-side angle does not work. In fact, the only time side-side angle does work is in a particular case where you have a right triangle. If I have a right triangle and the angle that I know is the right triangle, and I know this side, and I know this side, if this is a right angle, and I know this side, and I know this side, now I have an angle side side situation, and an angle side side situation. But the thing about it is, because it's a right triangle, there is a special, special theorem that can be used that makes sure that that third side is exactly the same. Well, if I were to call this instead of a side, I called it a leg, and that's a leg. And since this is a right angle, this side over here would actually be a hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. That means this would be simply another leg, and this would be another leg, and I would say leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, and that is the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem means that if I have a right angle, then and only then can I use angle side side, angle side side, as an option because the hypotenuse and the legs are locked into place by the Pythagorean theorem. So instead of calling it angle side side, we call it the hypotenuse leg theorem or HL, which is not only mathematically appropriate, it's grammatically appropriate. So HL, but this requires a right angle. So that one requires a right angle. The rest of them, the angles could be whatever you wish. So starting from there, we will continue our discussion.